Hey Rip City, this is Matisse Lila, and it's time to open the briefcase with Casey Holdall. Greetings, Blazer fans, and welcome to The Briefcase, episode 109 of The Briefcase. I'm your host, Casey Holdall, and we're a week out from training camp, and the Portland Trail Blazers finally have a new broadcast deal and a new streaming deal to announce one week before things get started with Media Day on Monday, a Monday from now, rolling into the start of training camp on October 1st. So we'll talk about that new media deal and hear from Trailblazers President of Business Operations, Dwayne Hankins, on this edition of The Briefcase. Before we get to the big news of the day about the new broadcast agreement and the new streaming agreement, I guess I should say as well, real quick, wanted to let you know too that FanFest is now locked in, scheduled for October 5th, presented by Daimler Trucks North America, Saturday, October 5th. Free event gives fans a chance to see this season's Trailblazers team as they begin the next chapter of Trailblazers basketball. FanFest, fantastic for the entire family. Two o'clock start time to FanFest. Doors open at one o'clock. You have to get a ticket, where we prefer if you get a ticket, you're not going to get turned away from FanFest, but you should get tickets. So that way we know who's how many people are going to be there. You need to register in advance. So don't listen to me saying that you don't have to advance you register. You absolutely do have to register. Trailblazers.com slash FanFest. Seating is first come, first serve. If you're watching this podcast, if you're listening to this podcast, I almost guarantee you have been to FanFest before you know about FanFest, but every year it's a great option to bring the family down to Moda Center, get a first look of the team, basically after they've only had four or five practices uh, before preseason starts. So really your first chance to see all the new players and all the old players on the court together before the preseason starts. Again, free event presented by Daimler. Go to trailblazers.com slash FanFest to get tickets. And it's a great time. It's a great family event. Uh, as I mentioned, too, it's first come, first serve seating. So if you get there early, chance to sit pretty, pretty far down in the bowl, sometimes as close as courtside. Uh, it's a great event. It's one of the best things we do. Uh, and every year it uh, it gets bigger and a lot of times it gets better. So once again, Fan Fest, October 5th, Saturday, Moda Center. Doors open at 1 o'clock. Scrimmage starts at 2 o'clock. Check it out. But the big news of the day, the Trailblazers have a broadcast agreement in place, an over-the-air broadcast agreement, meaning you'll be able to watch games for free over the air, at least every game that's not nationally broadcast, which this year is 81 games. They have one nationally broadcast game this year. So you'll be able to watch every single one of those over the air and a new streaming option coming directly from the team. Blazer Vision is back, albeit in streaming form. So let's go ahead and talk about how you're going to be able to watch support the Trailblazers this season. From the press release, team has announced a new era of Trailblazers broadcasting, reached an agreement with Sinclair Broadcast Group to launch the Rip City Television Network, a network of affiliates through the Pacific Northwest to serve as a new television home for your Portland Trailblazers, and the launch of a new paid subscription direct-to-consumer streaming service, Blazer Vision, starting in 2024-25, that's this season. The announcement marks the first time in Trailblazers history the majority of games will be available to fans via easy-to-access over-the-air television. Once again, it's not cable. It's over the airs. But if you have cable, if you have satellite, and they carry Sinclair broadcast, particularly here in Portland, KATU, you're fine. If you don't have those things, all you need is an antenna. You can get those in any number of places. Set up that antenna. You get Blazer games for free, 81 nights a year. A whole new way to watch Trailblazers without having to pay a dime, which is pretty great. Though if you do want the streaming option, they have that for you as well at a very good price point as well. So how it works is fans within the Trailblazers local broadcast market will have easy access to watch all local and non-exclusive national televised games through the Sinclair family of over-the-air television stations in Portland, which are KATU and KUNP. So a little more detail from the release. Fans within the Trailblazers local broadcast market, so Portland, Southwest Washington, Willamette Valley, will have easy access to watch all local and non-exclusive nationally televised games across the Sinclair family of local over-the-air television affiliates here in Portland, which are KATU and KUNP. Games will be available via an over-the-air antenna or local cable and satellite provider that carries KATU or KUNP, as I mentioned. If you have any local cable service, any local satellite service that has KATU, I don't think there's any of those agreements going or disagreements going on right now, but I wouldn't know. I do have cable and I do have KATU, so I know I'm going to be able to watch Blazer games on TV this year for free. And for those outside the Portland metro area, Blazer games will be available on Syncare's over there stations and associated multicast with cable clearance in Seattle, which is KUNS, in Medford, which is KTVL, in Eugene, which is KVAL, KCBY. KPIC, and in Yakima, Pasco, KEPR, and KIMA. But what's also important to know is in the coming months, there's going to be more and more stations that these are going to be rolling out to. So as Dwayne Hankins is going to talk about here in a minute, 
The stations that the Blazers are on right now, they remain on those stations, but they're going to add more stations as we get further and further into this agreement. And the result of that is that as of right now, it's a massive extension of the broadcast reach throughout Oregon and Washington. Teams saying as many as four times as many viewers be able to watch Blazer games this year as in previous years. I know last year too, when they changed the tier that the Blazer games were on right before the season started, that made it really difficult for people to watch games. That will not be the case this year. There will be over there options throughout Oregon and Southwest Washington. They're not all dialed in just yet, but they're getting closer and closer to those. More announcements coming. But if you're in Portland, Eugene, Medford, Seattle, anywhere where you're getting those stations, you will be able to get Trailblazer games. And that's a great thing. But if you're not able to get those broadcasts over the air, you will have a streaming option to utilize. I mean, you can use utilize streaming option even if you do get the broadcast over the air. But the new Blazer Vision will be available through the NBA app and NBA.com using any device that supports the NBA app or any web browser, which is included but not limited to iPhones, iPads, Android, Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, PlayStation 5, and Xbox One. I imagine you have at least one of those things, if not multiple of those devices. If you don't, congratulations, you've managed to keep technology almost completely out of your life. I don't know why you're listening to this podcast, but I appreciate you going through the the trouble nonetheless. But I imagine you probably do have one of those devices. The annual subscription fee for Blazer Vision will cost $125 for the entire season or $19.99 per month. Fans signing up for a full season Blazer Vision subscription by November 1st will also receive a pair of Upper Bowl tickets to a select Blazer game during the 2024-25 season. But more importantly, full and half season Rip City United members will receive a complimentary one year subscription to the Blazer Vision as part of their season ticket purchase. So if you're already considering buying season tickets and you're already considering getting Blazer Vision, you might go ahead and just get those tickets and then get a free subscription to the Blazer Vision anyways. So. $120 for the entire season for Blazer Vision, $19.99 if you want to do it month to month. If you decide to do the whole season, you get a ticket to a game. And if you already are a season ticket holder, even a half season ticket holder, you automatically get the subscription service to Blazer Vision. So you have now an over there option through Sinclair and KATU and an option for streaming from the team known as Blazer Vision. And that's really the direction that TV broadcasts are going in sports. RSNs, the business model for RSNs, it doesn't really seem to work all that much anymore now that so many people have cut the cord. People want options that can get direct streaming or over the air. Portland Trail Blazers now making both those available to their fans. Again, it's been one of those things where, you know, the broadcast situation has been such an issue for this team and it's really been something that the team has been concerned about. I know this because having worked for the team for so many years, I know that it's always been a real point of contention that we want as many of our fans to be able to see the games as possible. And that just hasn't always been the case. Fortunately now, that will not be the case. You have two options over the air and a stream provided by the team. Either one of those should be accessible to just about anyone in Oregon and Southwest Washington. And after so many years of either not being able to get games to everyone or the price being at a point where not everyone could access those games, having an option now where it's over the air where anyone could get those games for the cost of an antenna is an absolutely great thing. I'm really glad to see it get to this point. You know, it's been one of those things where, you know, we've had so much of an issue with our broadcast throughout the years that, you know, I think maybe some people checked out and we're going to talk to Dwayne about that here in a minute, just about the importance of having a robust broadcast in order to have a successful and healthy team. And I think we're getting there. And I think this deal with Sinclair and with Blazer Vision is going to allow our game team more accessible than basically any time that I've been with the team. So uh, undoubtedly a great thing. I'm really excited for our fans. I'm really excited for us too, uh, particularly as you know the team embarks on kind of this new era of Trailblazer basketball. You know, when you can't see the games, I think it's hard to get excited about the future, particularly when you're trying to build something later on. And so now that these games are gonna be much more accessible, both over the air and via stream, I think that's going to be a great thing for this team going forward. So it's going to hear from Dwayne Hankins, Trailblazers President of Business Operations, about this new broadcast deal and a few of the other goings on in terms of the business of basketball here in Portland. Talk a little bit WNBA, a little bit of just the broader notion of broadcast and the importance of it in sports and in Portland. Um, great conversation with Dwayne. Really appreciate him taking the time. We're going to talk to him again about a week at Media Day but a little taste of uh, what's to come from that. So here's Dwayne Hankins, Trailblazers President of Business Operations, discussing mostly the new broadcast situation, but a few other things as well. All right, here with Dwayne Hankins, President of Business Operations for the Portland Trailblazers. Dwayne, thank you so much for taking the time here. Uh, Some pretty exciting news, so I I know you're you're rather busy today, but uh, 
Really good to uh, to talk to you. Casey, it is always a blast to join you on your podcast. It, Thank it you. is always a pleasure. Thank you for, for joining the briefcase. And, uh, you know, absinthively, the reason to, to talk today, uh, the team uh, with a new broadcast agreement, uh, could, you, could you talk a little bit about uh, what is the, the next phase here for the Portland Trailblazers in terms of their broadcast situation? Yeah, I mean, it's a really exciting day, as you said, Casey. I think we are excited to announce that we are partnering with K2 uh, and their network of stations to launch the Rip City TV network. So, our games will be over the air, and a majority of them will be for the first time in our history, which is a really exciting opportunity for our fans. And then just to create even more optionality, have a direct-to-consumer product, and we're bringing back the old famous Blazer Vision yeah. name to that. So very exciting. And, you know, with this decision, I think we really wanted to make sure we we're putting our fans first. Yeah. You know, over the years, we've had a, a, a lot of challenging distribution things come up. And we really wanted to put it back in our hands. I mean, we have we have always produced our broadcast. We've taken a lot of pride in producing a really great broadcast, an Emmy Award winning broadcast. Congrats to those guys. And want our fans to be able to watch it and be able to see it. And as we went through the process of summer and talked to several different partners, we just kept coming back to them. And uh, they, they believe in our vision and we're really excited to get kicked off with them. And again, just give our fans all sorts of options and different ways to watch our games. Yeah, before we, we get into kind of some, some of the specifics, could you talk just a bit about the journey of the broadcast? Because I know it's been something that, you know, working for the team, it's been something we've been having to kind of bump up against for a while now. And I think from the outside, sometimes there's an opinion that there could more could be done, but it just really seems like I know from being inside of it that there's been so much work and so much effort and so much concern about the ability of our fans to watch games. And so I'm wondering if you could just kind of talk about, you know, in your role now that, that you've been here with the organization for some time, just the, the journey of the broadcast and getting it to where it is now. Yeah, that's a really – I could give a really long answer on that question, <laughs> Casey. So, yeah, I've, I mean, I've been with the team 11 years, and even in before I got into this role, uh, broadcast is part of my, my responsibility. And so – you know, we have done this, this is now the fourth time we've gone through a, a negotiation process on broadcast. I think, you know, it's always been at the very end about our fans being able to watch their games. And if you go back to even NBC Sports Northwest, who was a great partner of ours, it was about how do we find ways to get our fans to watch the games. There was a point um, when I first joined the organization where we had most of our games on NBC Sports Northwest, but we had 15 games on KGW back then. And those games would always get highly rated, and yeah. we love them. And we remembered in, as part of the negotiation, the next negotiation with NBC Sports Northwest, they wanted to take all the inventory of all those games and try to get distribution. So it was always, okay, well, if it's going to help us get more distribution of all our games, let's let's try that. And then when we ma made the move over to Root, again, great partner of ours, it was about distribution. It was about the games being available to as many fans as possible. We were going to be back on satellite, direct TV, all those things. And then as that relationship went on, the the industry changed, yeah. the market changed. And it changed, it changed drastically, I think, in the last couple of years. And a lot of teams are dealing with the same thing that we're dealing with. But as we looked at it this year... And being able to end the agreement early with Root, we really wanted to just put our fans first. And we wanted to be out of the business of being sort of caught in between a distribution partner and a station. And so, you know, again, knowing that we've always been able to do our games and do them well, we wanted to take that responsibility out and just make sure our games were available. Absolutely. And that seems like what this is going to provide. So Sinclair being, being the partner with, with KTU, so game one, I go to my TV, I turn it on to KATU, and Portland Trailblazers are on at 7 o'clock or 7.30, whenever our first what game is What time the game is, yeah. So th that, that'll be some learning that'll have to happen for, some, for our fans. So I think what we're making sure we're doing is having the games as available as possible. So they will be on K2's dot two station. And so if you are an over-the-air customer, what that means to you is it's K2 is... 2.1 or 2.1 our games will always be on 2.2 and then also we'll be on KUNP and we'll be on the dot one station and that's in the weeds for people who who uh, know that but for over the air they'll be available on both of those stations and we're constantly going to be promoting where to find those games because it is a change from where we used to be you'll also have depending on you're not over the air and you have a cable or some other product you'll also be able to find the games that way depending and we'll be very very close with fans and telling you where and how and when to, to be able to find the games 
And then beyond that, you know, the direct to consumer product is sort of your your way to get the games regardless of how you're tethered to your broadcast television. And you can watch those games on any device, anywhere. Um, and that's going to be really helpful. So, and again, the price point, we really wanted to make it as, as, as affordable for fans as possible. We think $120 for the year or $19.99 for the month is the way to do it. The other thing that Sinclair brings us with this broadcast network is we are over the air in uh, almost all the other key markets in Oregon and, and in Washington. So our distribution just in wa- Oregon and Washington will increase four times. So we go from you know, roughly a quarter million households in Oregon to over a million, which is great. Uh, it's even more than that when you consider Washington. You know, there's, and there's more markets to come. So, you know, what we're launching with on day one will not be what it looks like on, you know, day maybe 30 or 60. We're going to continue to have conversations with different, with different markets to make sure our games continue to be available in those markets on the broadcast side. Well, and, in, I mean, you talk about the changes in the industry and with, with broadcast television and just, just television in general seeming to fracture a lot between, you know, broadcast and cable and streaming now. You know, the opportunity to... <laughs> To be able to watch games without paying seems pretty great. I think we're all kind of accustomed to, you know, <laughs> cable goes away or kind of degrades a bit. And it's like, well, you can have these streams and then you got to pay for every one of those streaming options. And the next thing you know, you're like, but I'm back to how much I was spending before. And so to have an option now where if you have a TV and an antenna, it sounds like you'd be able to get Blazer games. That seems like a pretty great thing. Yeah, I mean, I go back to <clears throat> my youth and growing up in Chicago and watching, you know, the White Sox and the Bulls at the time and just being the games being available on WGN. Yeah. And I remember moving, you know, I've, I've been in a couple different cities, but there there are people that are Cubs fans or Braves fans in markets that they probably wouldn't be, but yeah. the games were on and they were available. And those fans were able to build a relationship with that team by watching those games on broadcast. And I keep going back to that as our main sort of north star is there's so many things for people to do and take their time and god knows social media and all these other things can really take up uh, a lot of space in people's heads and so for us the ability to have the games easily available i think really creates that opportunity for lifelong fans so you know you want to be able to fall in love with the team and you fall in love with the team by watching them play it might not be you know there's going to be years where you can have (laughs) more losses than wins, but you're still going to see those glimpses in those moments. And we really want our fans to be able to experience that this year and, and, and see the things that we see on the court. And when you put them behind, you know, the, the major paywall that we had last year, we saw, I mean, it's no secret. Our ratings were, were, um, decline was the biggest in the league. Some of that might've been team performance, but most of it, our data knows we can see is that the games were not available. And that happened, you know, on the eve of the season, which was challenging for us. Yeah, and I guess you you really did kind of answer really the question I wanted to ask, which was the importance of a readily available broadcast for a team's relationships with their fans. Because to to your point, yeah, we're we're going through changes now in the organization. We're building towards something, and it's hard to get excited about building towards something if you can't watch it or you can't see it. And so it, it does seem like it's an especially important time for the organization to have this deal because it seems like now you can watch games in an easier fashion and feel like, yeah, maybe we're not winning as much as I would like to see on a day-to-day basis, but, like, I can see the path that we're taking right now. And that's something that, you know, if you can't watch a lot of the games, like, it's it's just hard to maybe feel invested that way. So to, to get this done, it feels like it really does help bond the, the team to the fans mm-hmm. in, in ways that I think you always want when you're an organization, particularly when you have a place in, in – your city or your community like the Blazers have. Yeah, yeah. We, <clears throat> we just actually talked about that last week, how, you know, our our team, Rip City, sort of the beating heart of this community, and we're the meeting place, and it's a two-and-a-half-hour commercial for our, for our game, for our product that fans can watch, and um, it brings people together. Like, the you know, you know this, this, this is the only thing, I think, in the world where you – a game winning shot happens and you'll lean over and hug a stranger next to you. Right. So there's just this community piece to it. And we really feel like our games uplift the community. And so again, <clears throat> when fans are at the center of a decision like this, you really want to create that opportunity for fans to be able to watch the games as much as possible and just do what you can to lift up the community. Let's talk about the, the direct to stream consumer mm-hmm. option, because that's something that, 
you know, even outside of of the cable satellite issues. Like that's something that fans have been wanting for a while now, and obviously a lot of a lot of different kind of competing interests and reasons why that can and can happen sometimes. But but to have that available now as an option seems like again that's a reaction to to where the market is at right now, which is you know a lot of people are cutting the cord. Even though you can get the games over antenna, a lot of people that's that's not necessarily the way that people interact with that content these days. So to have a streaming option that's going to be stable and dependable, and I've been around long enough to know we had one before mm-hmm. that kind of went back and forth. So it sounds like this one, though, it, it sounds like it, it it really is to a place where where it's meeting. I think the audience where they're at right now, which mm-hmm. is they want streaming options. Yeah, and that's funny because I you're right. We did have a streaming product back in like two, t- 2012, 2013, maybe twenty fourteen. The challenge was always those that that streaming product was geared towards audiences who couldn't get Comcast, right? Yeah, and and only had satellite distribution in the sort of remote areas that they were. The problem back then, and this seems like it wasn't that long ago, <laughs> is that internet speeds weren't fast right, enough, yeah. and so the product the product just wasn't ready for prime time. And now it is, and I think again, it's just about <clears throat> optionality. Like I. I think you know fans want to be able to watch the games not just in front of a TV. They want to be able to yeah. watch them on a phone or a tablet or wherever. And so, again, just providing that op- option for fans is, I think, really, really important. It creates that connection. They can get to see those moments. You know, it helps that um, I think both with the over-the-air deal and direct-to-consumer, you know, fans will have more access to the trail. And I think the trail is a great way to see behind the scenes of how we do our, you know, how we have our process. And basketball has done an incredible job sharing that. And I want our fans to be able to see, you know, see that process more. And Root did show it before and after games, but again, it was that smaller audience. Yeah. And now a, a larger audience gets to watch that, which I think is great. Yeah, and as someone who who has a just a small input yeah. in the trail, I, I do appreciate that because yeah, it it, it is it's. Having worked for the team for a long time, uh, I know kind of some of the concerns about kind of letting people into those areas and letting people see kind of some of the behind the scenes stuff. It's not an easy lift. Like mm-hmm. there there's always concerns about that, but the team has been really great about about allowing that to happen and those episodes have been great. Um, mm-hmm. they've been doing a fantastic job with those. I think the most recent one with Donovan Klingon's workout yeah, was, was I mean like I've never seen footage like that. Like and you know, I work for the team. So right, like right. It, it really does does open up some options. There are are there more Options in terms of kind of some of what the offerings are going to be from the team or, or, or from Sinclair in terms of, of additional kind of broadcast options or, or at least shows or, or, or things that they might be able to see on these new channels? Yeah, so they just hired a new GM at the station, Dean Dittmer. Uh, he came from Phoenix, and, you know, he had a really close relationship with the Cardinals down there. Sure. And um, has really believes in the power of sport. And so we're going to have this whole new network that we we get to operate uh, alongside them and there's there's plenty of opportunity for those kinds of content opportunities so i I mean we we're still talking internally about what those look like but the ability to have you know tons of different coverage about the blazers whether you know whether that's the trail or other shows that we concept and come up with i think is really key The, the thing that we know and we've learned and you've seen it casey is that fans they can't really get enough content yeah. about the team. And so, you know, we want to make sure to, to do that as much as possible with this partnership. My understanding as well is that if you're a season ticket holder, you might have access to uh, to the Blazer Vision. Uh, it sounds like maybe as a part of your, your season ticket holder package. That's, yeah, correct, Casey. So half and full season ticket holders get get a subscription to Blazer Vision. I mean, that's, you know, that's that feels like the right thing to do, yeah, right? These I are, mean, it, it, it does, but it's also... It's also a nice thing to do, I right. would say. But you know, these are these are our diehard fans. These are the people that love the Blazers, and so that felt like the right approach. And then also, I mean, just to mention for fans who aren't season ticket holders, if you buy the package, you get two tickets to a game in an, in the Upper Bowl. So again, just inviting fans back in who maybe have. Maybe it's been a couple of years. Yeah. Maybe you haven't been around the team. Maybe you didn't get a chance to watch a game last year. We really want fans to be able to take in this this young team that's you know that we think is really exciting. And getting the WNBA agreement squared away, I know that the, the team was a part of that, and you know it's not the exact same ownership, but to get that to the finish line and, and to have it here in the arena also seems like a, a great thing for fans going forward. And again, just a kind of feeds into the broader notion that there's a lot of good things happening in terms of basketball in Portland right now. Yeah, that's one we've been working on for a couple of years, and and again, we're just excited. I mean, the most exciting part is it means year-round basketball yeah. down here, right? So we'll have a Blazer season and then a WNBA season. 
And just to be a part of that is is phenomenal. The Bethal family, the family that that purchased the Thorns and is now is entering into the Portland WMBA, is a fantastic family. They're going to be a great ownership group. We're excited to partner with them on what that means for the city. And yeah, I, I think again, it's just part of that narrative of building the right foundation and getting towards the good things, and, and we're excited about it. In general, just outside of of the broadcast piece, uh, what would you say is just the general kind of status of of the business right now for the Portland Trailblazers? It's been it's been a fun, busy summer. I mean, we've we've got a lot accomplished that we needed to get done. Obviously, the biggest one I think was the lease deal with the city. You know, we bought five more years with the city. We've got some um, investment coming in that's going to help help with the building it's, it's a bridge extension so i want to be clear on that and our goal is to do a long-term extension you and i had talked about this earlier this summer so that was a big to do to get done you know we did a partnership with albina vision trust our neighbors you know to the north of us and that has been a really important partnership because we we really want to see this district be lively not just on event days but on every day and they have that vision and we have that vision so it's exciting to work with them on what that can look like we got this this broadcast deal done which i think is is really exciting for us so it really has felt like we've really turned the page this summer and been able to do some really big things that we've been talking about for a couple of years but have finally been able to get done and you know it's it's exciting i think just being able to have all summer knowing what our team looks like knowing what we're going into knowing what we're marketing and and selling on the on the ticketing side you know it's a, it's exciting you know there's been a lot of articles written this summer about you know our team and how intriguing they are and interesting they are and we've got some young players that can really really get excited about so i think that you know after I, a transition, you know, it's been it's been fun to kind of turn the page and really start this new chapter. Yeah, Brooke and I were talking about that on the podcast the other day, just that it hasn't even been a year since kind of everything turned over. And it feels like it's, sometimes it's been longer than that. So, but, but you have to remind yourself, like, hey, like, we just changed gears and, and are switching into a, kind of a, a different approach to, to where we're taking the team. And so to have a lot of these business initiatives seem to kind of come online about the same time that – there's like a there's a bit of a synergy there. It mm-hmm. seems like between the business and, and the basketball side that a structure is being put in place to have good things happen going forward both, on both sides, and yeah. it, it, it looks that way. It, well, it's definitely that way. I mean, Joe and I talk all the time about things, and and we also you know talk about building this sort of championship ready infrastructure. And so you know that started last year with G League. Like we knew we weren't going to be able to get our team in a really good spot from a player development standpoint if we didn't have G League. So. <laughs> did it in record time but got it done and you know we saw the fruits of that already last year the other side on the business piece was or the business side was on the lease and we needed to have access to some public funding through the ticket tax that we have to start putting some investment into our arena and the city agrees with that and that's a great start and then we look out the broader neighborhood and you know we we keep thinking about women's final four in 2030 but we want this part of town to be thriving and and fun and amazing and we really think we can get there um, you know, with a partnership with AVT and others to help create that. And just this broadcast deal. I mean, I think, again, we wanted to make it available for fans. Yes, we took a bit of a, a haircut on our overall rights fee, but we believe that in the end we're going to have more benefit both to our fans, but also from a ticket sales standpoint. We already have been, you know, monetizing and selling the broadcast since I've been here. So for us, I think we have a head start on other teams that need to make this transition because we already – you know, sell ads to our broadcast and do all those things. So, yeah, it's it's not, you know, I mean, the broadcast piece is exciting. A lot of the other work hasn't been maybe as outward facing or as fan yeah. facing. But but Joe and I have believed, like, you start with the foundation. It's not really the stuff that you notice, but you, you change that up and you get that to where you want to be and you start seeing the fruits of that. And I think we're starting to get there, which we're excited about. Awesome. Well, Dwayne, thank you so much for, for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Anytime, Casey. So there you go. Trailblazers President of Business Operations, Dwayne Hankins, discussing both the new over-the-air broadcast agreement with Sinclair and the new streaming service, Blazer Vision. I know the team is incredibly thrilled to have these options for the community. Again, like this is something that's really weighed on the team for a long time. And it's something where it's even hard for me to talk about it sometimes because I know fans get upset about it and understandably so. But there's this notion that the team like doesn't care about people seeing our games. Like that is our lifeblood. If people can't see our games, we can't develop new fans. And that's what a team needs in order to stay successful. So, you know, getting this broadcast squared away, it's going to be accessible for everybody. It's kind of the new wave of what we're seeing in the NBA in terms of broadcast agreements. It's what they're doing in Utah. It's what they're doing in Phoenix. 
That's what we're doing in Portland now. It's a great thing to get squared away before the start of the season. A little bit of time before the games kick into gear here in the middle end of October. But long story short, you know exactly where you're going to be able to find Trailblazers games this year, at least as of right now. And there's going to be more options as the season goes on, as they build out this network. And one of the great things, too, is we get to keep control of the broadcast. So Kevin, Lamar, Brooke, Michael, the entire crew sticking around. That's always been something that's been really important to the team is to have control of the broadcast because we feel like we know our fans better than anybody else. And we want to tailor our broadcast to our fans. And this allows us to do that. With this agreement, it has never been easier to watch Trailblazers basketball. This is the exact time where it should be easy to watch Trailblazers basketball. You don't want to have all these different impediments. As Dwayne talked about, you know, there's so many options in terms of entertainment for people that if you don't make your product accessible, you're going to get left behind. You know, and, you know, credit to Dwayne, too. He even mentioned, and he was like, you know, our ratings dropped significantly last year because fans couldn't see our games because they changed the tier that we were on right before the start of the season. So now to go from that situation where there were so many fans that didn't have access to our games to the situation we're in now, which is there's going to be an unprecedented amount of access to our games is really a... It's, I'm really happy for the team, but I'm really happy for our fans. I know it's something you guys have wanted for a long time. It's something, as I said over and over, has been weighing on this organization. So it's nice to get this thing squared away and get an option that is available to basically everybody if you have an antenna or if you have a device that allows you to stream. And that's going to do it for this session of The Briefcase. Thank you so much for joining me, as always. As I mentioned, one week out from Media Day, one week and a day from the start of training camp. We'll have plenty of coverage from Media Day and from the first days of training camp right here on The Briefcase, also on the Blazers Balcony and Section 113. So subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I am Casey Holdall. Go Blazers.